Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to a live stream. Um, and this is actually the first live stream I've done since the summer. And I have a wonderful guest with me today. I have Ro from Scarif Podcast is here. And we're going to do um, a really fun, I think it's going to be a fun episode. We're going to each state five of our real, like of our anticipated shows coming up. I actually have one in 2023, but the rest are in 2024. I think the same with you, Ro. You yeah, know? right. And I know you have maybe like five or six. I have one that I also want to do a little mention of that's not really on my list because it is it is technically 2023. So, uh, but before we do that, let's, um, we're just going to um, do a few introductions. First off, if you're just joining us in the chat, uh, please say hello and then we'll uh, say, do a little shout out to you there as well. Um, <clears throat> oh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, yeah, Ro, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody a bit about yourself? Sure. I am Ro from the Scare of Scuttlebutt podcast, uh, part of the Red 5 network. But uh, if you are not familiar with the Scare of podcast, I talk about uh, mostly Star Wars, but um, I like talking about other you know franchises, other movies. Uh, we uh, I usually pick a, a friend and we dive deep into certain lore uh whether it's uh you know force lore or comic books or um anything having to do with movies and especially science fiction and fantasy um it uh it's one of those genres that is really uh to me it's an amazing genre it uh kind of makes you think outside the box and i like to kind of dive into uh you know all sorts of uh tomfoolery as they say yeah absolutely <laughs> uh well you know um uh, sci-fi is my favorite genre. So, uh, we're, we're in good company. And anyway, if anybody doesn't know who Ro is, he's been on, I think we've had you on the show a couple of times. Okay. Uh, we had, we had you on, we did a really fun one with, uh, with the auction house. And so that was back in the summer where we were looking at five costumes that were five seems to always be a good number, five really cool costumes that they had that they were auctioning off at the auction house. And so anyway, one of the things that we had done during the auction, you know, uh, live stream was we gave away a book to one of the viewers and I don't know if they're here, but, uh, so, uh, the auction house sent the, it to the viewer and in turn, they also sent a copy for both Scarif, like for Roe and myself, Kashim Co. So we both have our books here. Did you want to show your book? Yes. Ready? <laughs> let's, let's, let's coordinate. Ready? Three, Wait, one, two, three. Three, two, two one. one. Yay. <laughs> it's so, a really awesome book. Yeah. So anyway, so Brian, who is the CEO of the costume uh, house, he actually signed this for us too. He wrote this and, and it was really weird because during the broadcast, I had mentioned that I used it, you know, as part of my research when I was working on a video on Star Wars because John Mallow, the late John Mallow, uh, he had actually gone down there and interviewed him and before he passed away, because he passed away from cancer. So I just want to show where he signed it here. Bra Sorry, I was saying Brian, Brandon, I apologies. Brandon Al Allinger there. So he signed it. Isn't that lovely? Love yeah. It. So this is like, I was just so blown away by that. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. It is really awesome. So, and I can't remember who got the book. Uh, yeah, I don't remember either. But. So I, but my understanding is they did get it. So um, anyway, so that's just some, something really nice to have in our collections. It is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, one of the, um, one of the other books that I love is the, uh, the, what is the seek? No, the prequel book uh, by Trisha Bigger. Oh yeah. And that is an amazing book, but anything mm -hmm. that really um, gives you some great detail on costumes um, mm -hmm. is fantastic. And it's, it's a, it's a hefty book. It's very big it and, and thick and it's beautiful. You got uh, Leia on the cover, a couple of stormtroopers in the yeah. back. Now that wasn't the costume that we were talking to them about. It was her other one, the ceremonial right. costume, but mm -hmm. they're both really iconic. Um, that one has the hood. Kudos so. to the, uh, to, to the auction house for, for sending these I know. Uh, really was, wonderful and, people. And I had a really nice, actually over the summer, I uh, ended up emailing Megan and they have a couple of other auctions coming up. So she said she's going to keep us in mind Excellent. for a future one. So hopefully That's that great. will be really fun. So anyway, so today what we're going to do is talk about our five most anticipated shows of 2024. Uh, some of them might be a show or a movie. Like, you know, we've kind of got both in there. Actually, I saw a review today of one of the shows, the movies that you have on your list, Ro. Oh, and okay. I didn't watch it though because I don't. I wanted to wait, but 
Oh, oh, thank you so much, Natural. That's really lovely. I uh, appreciate it. Um, but anyway, okay. So who wants to go first? Should you go or should I go? Why don't you go first? Let's, uh, let's see what sure. you got. Okay. So I'll start. I'm also a little rusty here because I haven't done a live stream for a while. So I feel a little bit, if I'm a little bit awkward, that's why. It's, it's a lot of buttons to push. That's so true, <laughs> right? right? I know. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, he always says, we used to make fun of him because he'd be like, there's so many buttons. <laughs> so my first can I, one can I'm I, doing. Can I say hi to my new patron, Andrew? Uh, of in course the chat? you can say hi. We're, here, let me just What's up, pull Andrew? up this con. Let me find you, Andrew. I saw him. Oh, here he is. Andrew Haley. Yes, that book Hi, is awesome. Hi, Andrew. It's really nice to have you here. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing I was going to say before we get going is I was just chatting with Ro before we started, and we're hoping this is going to be a regular thing. So if you guys, if there's any ideas that you have, you know, about what kind of show you'd like to, us to cover, you know, Andrew, or sorry, Ro does a lot of uh, science fiction, obviously Star Wars is your sort of your bailiwick. I really love science fiction as well, but I also like uh, horror. That's sort of my other little favorite one. Oh, we and definitely should team up. Uh, you know, next month is is Halloween, and for sure, yes. Team up. I don't have like I don't have any. Well, I guess the first one I'm doing is isn't really a, a horror. I think it's more a. Um, sort of maybe a murder mystery type mm. thing. I feel like with Knives Out, maybe that's what it is. So let me just talk about the first one. I'm just going to grab a picture here. Where is it here? Of course, I didn't, uh, I didn't label them. So <laughs> and that the, would, and the that thumbnails would are like this small. They're really, really small. Tell. Where is it here? Oh, maybe I don't even have it. Uh oh. Uh, uh, what's this one here? This one's yours. Mm -hmm. I thought I had uploaded it, but maybe I didn't. I um, know. okay, well, that's fine. I didn't upload it. So I'll just, anyway. Okay. So the first one is a murder at the end of the world. So I don't know if anyone's seen the trailer. There's a new trailer out. And what this is, it's a limited series, and it's going to be on the FX channel. So the reason why, like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, this looks really cool. And then I noticed that Clive Owen was in the trailer, and Britt Marling is in the trailer. And then I was like, oh, Britt yeah. Marling is mm -hmm. in it. Big so, fan. <clears throat> huge fan. So if any of you guys know Britt Marling, so she she has a really great show on Netflix called the OA. But before that, I even knew some of her movies. Like she, I think she has a movie called the East and the sound of my voice. And, um, she's done a, Oh, I think she did another earth, I believe, which is like two, you know, it's a parallel universe. That's uh, how I got earth. to know her. Yeah. Another so earth. fantastic. So she is a, so if you don't know her, first of all, she's just, uh, an amazing actress, beautiful, stunning actress. But on top of that, she's really a great writer and a showrunner. And she's and, from Chicago. Born and in she's Chicago. from Chicago. So Ooh. a big shout out to Chicago. <laughs> and she has a writing partner named Zal Batmanglish. <laughs> Sorry, I'm butchering that. Um, anyway, so uh, this, this is what it says here. It's an upcoming American television limited series created by Britton Zal. And it's set to premiere, it was set to premiere, uh, sorry, it is set to premiere November 14th. The series, although the series was originally meant to premiere in uh, this year, but because of the SAG after strike, it got delayed. So it will be debuted November 14th and into December. Um, but I think that maybe because of Knives Out and, and you know, the interest around that, you know, that type of thing, like murder mystery has sort of piqued the interest i when i first read about it i thought it was based on a book because there is a book called a murder at the end of the world which mm -hmm. by the way is such a great name yeah but actually it's not <clears throat> it's i think it's wholly written by Britt and zal and so anyway i think it's gonna be a really really exciting show i'm looking forward to it it is a limited series so it, um if anybody doesn't know what a limited series is it just means that there's just one season like they don't you know they tell the story. We in in the old days, we used to call it a mini series. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we used to have like they used to always take like Sidney Sheldon and make his books into a mini series. Mm -hmm. Or but they did some of the classics as well. Sure. You know, of mice and men, they would make a limited series on that. So 
Uh, the other thing that I was kind of excited about, so the woman who stars in it, her name is Emma Corrin, and she played Princess Di in The Crown. Right. So, and I, but, I knew she looked familiar, and I looked her exactly. up. And, oh, that's who she was, yes. So unfortunately, I thought I had a picture of her. So in the in the show, she has like her hair is cut short, and it's mm. dyed, so you won't really... Yeah, you may not know her. And the other thing that was exciting is there's a guy named Harris Dickinson who's in it. And he's in a movie called Triangle of Sadness, which is such a great movie. Mm. So um, he plays a supermodel in that. So it looks like I'm not sure. I think he plays the love interest of the main character who is I think she's supposed to be kind of like a Nancy Drew trying to solve this uh, murder. Yeah. And there's this like, of course, everything's really mysterious. And the family looks to be very wealthy and and that kind of thing. So, so that's my first choice uh, of my five. And uh, I hope you guys will check that out. It's called a murder at the end of the world. And I think it's on, um, it's an FX show, but it's going to be on uh, Hulu on Hulu. Yes. Yeah. So Which I don't understand that. I don't understand the difference between uh, Hulu and FX. Cause I think actually uh, mur uh, was that one. Um, I think, it, uh, I think what it, we do in the depends. shadows is also right. on, uh, FX on Hulu, isn't it? I think it depends on who um, who distributes versus who pays for the show. So I think ah. FX was the producer on the show. And um, that's funny. Yes. Danielle Steele. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was mentioning Sydney Sheldon, who, by the way, I think is Tori, Tori uh, spelling spot. No, that's no, that's a different. That's not Sheldon. That's right, spelling. Yeah. Spelling. Yeah. Aaron Spelling. But, um, yes, Andrew is correct. So oh, Hulu, thanks, Andrew. Hulu would be, you know, kind of like the dis distribution end of, of stuff. And um, yeah. Okay. So I'm totally confused I, because I have like, I already have three subscriptions right. and I can't <clears throat> keep up. Yeah, absolutely. So I just saw the trailer today for it. I was kind of doing some quick research on some of your uh, picks and I fell in love right away, especially when I saw Britt Marlin. I was a big fan. I found her work in Another Earth um, stupendous. Um, obviously, I, I, I did some I did some research and obviously, you know, fell in love with her after knowing she was from Chicago. Um, but she's the type of actress, the talent that um, she, for lack of a better term, she's a go getter. She was able to, you know and create and write the another earth show with uh, her husband at the time um you know it's funny when 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 actors really want to do a role but they can't find that specific role that is offered to them i love when actors just you know pick up and then do it themselves and i think it comes out uh, better it's uh there's more passion behind the scenes there when when they do these these roles and another earth really is is one of those movies that um it's really thoughtful science fiction it's uh it's great um and i i can't recommend it highly enough i absolutely agree and the actor who's in that as well i don't know his name you wouldn't he's like he's one of those actors if you saw him you're like oh yeah that guy who right. plays uh the man i think she uh, she plays like um a woman who killed a man's family i believe the, she gets drunk the, the the baby and she gets yeah. drunk at the beginning of the movie and mm -hmm. that first scene is so like jarring because she i think the family stops at a red light and he gets, you know, I, I'm not going to spoil it, but things happen yeah. to a point where you are just like your jaw is, is on the mm -hmm. floor. Um, but it, you know, it, it, and it, and it's funny because it's science fiction without really focusing on the science fiction aspect of it. There's things that are happening with the alternate dimension, alternate universe, these, this other earth that just all of a sudden pops up out of nowhere. And the rest of the world are, is worried about that where you know her and this other character are, are worried about the personal nature of how the death has affected him because it ruined his life it ruined his family and she's trying to figure out how to how to fix that um so it's 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 kind of fascinating i uh, again if uh, if you mm -hmm. catch it anywhere if you look for it or find it anywhere you know check it out because it's worth it yeah she has three seasons of the OA, OA yeah. on Netflix, and then they canceled it. It was such a great show. Mm -hmm. One of the, when people say there are no original stories out there, I'm always like, no, but Britt Marling, she everything she creates is so 
wholly original. I mean, yeah. she might take some inspiration from, from other places, mm -hmm. but she really, they really come up with really unique stories. Like um, the sound of my voice is about a cult uh, about, uh, you know, someone who is a uh, reporter, like infiltrating a cult to mm. report on it. And what I love about it is that you're like, is it like, is it a cult? Like, is she a cult leader? Or is she not a cult leader? Not quite sure. And I love that. She, she kind of lets you answer the questions. Like she doesn't give you, she doesn't spoon feed you the answers. So I yeah. will be really looking forward to the show. Nice. All right. So, uh, Ro, do you want to go next? Which one do you want to do? Sure. <laughs> um, pop up, a, a picture and then we'll just go from there. I don't know. Sure. Which, what do you got? I'll let me. Okay. I have to go to the, I pick one for you. Uh, okay, let's do this one, if that's okay. okay. Rebel Moon on Netflix later on in the year. And uh, this is going to be an interesting one for, I was telling you in the chat, um, mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, the, in the direct message. This is going to be an, an interesting one for Star Wars fans. This is uh, Zack Snyder's um idea for a star wars movie that he brought to disney and disney basically said no thanks and snyder basically said okay fine i'll just do it myself so it's uh it'll be interesting because obviously mm -hmm. you're, you're gonna have some some star wars fans that are going to be comparing and um you know what uh what kind of uh stories would we have gotten with Zack snyder um there are uh certain elements of this that is uh you know very reminiscent to a, uh, you know, a Star Wars. And I don't know if you have that picture um, in your um, behind the scenes there of uh, the character that is holding, you know, two light blade weapons. And I'm not going to call them lightsabers, but uh, they're pretty yeah, much. Yeah, you know what? I, 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 OK, so I definitely am going to call out StreamYard on this because I know that I uploaded it <laughs> and my, some of my pictures are missing, which I know I uploaded. Yeah. Let, let me just do it right now. I can just grab it. Yeah. And then do it right now while you're talking. But uh, you know, this is uh people said that there was, it was going to be a trilogy, a new trilogy uh, in, in science fiction. It's going to be two films. The first one drops in December uh, with some limited release in the theater. Um, and then I think the next, uh, the second part and conclusion of rebel moon also on Netflix, which I think is in February of 2024. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, it's, uh, one of those, uh, projects that, uh, you know, I'm always excited about seeing uh, brand new science fiction again, you know, really happy with the genre and really excited to experience new, uh, new stories and new galaxies. Uh, not that I'm, you know, getting tired of Star Wars, but it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it should be good. Um, Natural Selection has a question. Is that Ryan Reynolds? No, it's, it's not Ryan Reynolds. Here, here's the, uh, this actress, uh, she was wonderful in Sense8 and she is yes. back in here. Sense8 yeah. is another uh, series on Netflix that was canceled way too soon. Absolutely. She's but, also in that uh, that movie with Tom Hanks. It's a it's a science fiction film. It's also the same director uh, as Sense Eight. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. But um, yeah. So uh, I again, people are going to be comparing this to uh, what Star Wars could have been uh, if uh, Zack Snyder had anything to do with it uh, going forward. Um, so yeah, Cloud Atlas. Yes, she was in that too. Yes, Cloud Atlas. Thanks, yeah. thanks guys. Um, and again, uh, sense eight. And I think cloud Atlas was also a Wachowski production, which it uh, was. And then, and then what was neat about cloud Atlas is that she played multiple roles, right? right. Everybody did the whole cast yeah. played multiple roles. So she, uh, that was my first time seeing her. And then I saw her in the OA, of course, in the OA, she's sorry, in the OA in, uh, uh, sense eight, she is like a kick-ass martial artist, um, you know, she, she grows up, she grows up in Japan under a very, uh, strict family, um, mm. dynamic and, um, uh, just, you know, she's just marvelous in it. So I can't wait to see her in this. I think she's just going to be phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Sensate was just a unique show. And again, mm -hmm. the Wachowskis, uh, Chicago born and bred and, uh, um, you have lots of things yeah. to be proud of today then. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Um, and, and this actress here, the main character, I mean, obviously it's an all-star cast. There's Charlie Hoonan is in it. I, I know mm -hmm. this other actor, actor here. Uh, I can't remember his name, but the female, I've seen her. Like, she's one of those people I'm like, I've seen her. I know her. 
Uh, but I can't like, she's not a household name, at least in my opinion. Right. So well, she, she might be after this. She might be after this. And it's funny. Um, go ahead. I was going to say that a lot of the, these new shows that I'm going through, I noticed that they're kind of going with either people who maybe were sort of, um, I don't know what you call them, minor characters, supporting characters. And now they're, they're giving them these lead characters. So that's really, yeah. really cool. That's oh, cool. she was an atomic bond, bond, blonde, atomic blonde. I have not seen that one. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. It's for Charlie's Theron. That yeah. one. Yeah, no, it's really good. That's right. So, um, she's one There's of those a... people. She's not a household name, but maybe right. eventually she will be. Sure. Cool. There's a comment in the chat uh, by Carl. Why is every show shot with as little lighting as possible these days? And then um, previous to that, hooray, more bland, drab, grim, beige costume design. It's okay to use colors. That's, that's funny because that's one that? of my, Carl did too, just a couple of comments. Uh, okay, Carl, that. I have to tell you, I'm doing a video on the foundation, on foundation, uh, Isaac Asimov's new show. That's or it's the second season on Apple. And I have to say it's uh, not. <laughs> it's very bright. <laughs> lots of beautiful colors. And then I will also say that um, that other Star Wars show that I have mentioned before on uh, here, I really liked. And I now I can't remember it because I have a terrible memory. The Book of Boba Fett? Uh, no. Uh, what's the one with the prison? Uh, and, and, and or. And or, yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That one, I think that one, I mean, they do have some moodiness, but uh, for instance, Coruscant or whatever is so beautiful, beautiful, mm -hmm. gorgeous colors planet, and costume yeah. signs and everything. Sure. I'm probably, probably not saying that correctly. Coruscant. Good. Coruscant. Okay. <laughs> You're going to be my. <laughs> I'll be your uh, Star Wars guide. For uh, sure. But that that is one of my biggest complaints of uh, on the Ahsoka show because everything, like everybody's screenshots, you know, um, shots of the show to illustrate or post their posts, and and everything is like dark and gray and yeah. and muted. Um, so so uh, I, I, I it, feel you, Carl. It 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 looks like it. You know, maybe it is a bit of like. Um, well, no, it's not a desert planet. It looks like a grain planet. So I don't know. It's hard to know. I mean, and but you, you know what, though? I mean, yeah. production de production design, I mean, they really do have to make decisions on, mm -hmm. on color scheme, on materials that are available to to the characters, not the people behind the scenes, the characters that are that are being portrayed. Um, so I, you know, I um, I can kind of see some of their uh, creative decisions. You have to kind of go with a color palette um to kind of I, identify this uh this project for the most part um so yeah to yeah. each their own uh yeah and a blue orange beam too yeah so the, the turquoise orange is sort of like a really hot palette right now mm -hmm. um and then yeah so the and the color grading and so on uh yeah star trek is super colorful <laughs> so Maybe yeah. that I'm hoping that that trend will kind of go away a little bit. Uh, but, you know, like, for instance, Star Wars, it's on a desert planet. So everyone's going to be wearing natural Bur sort of burlap colors, sacks, burlap sacks, lots of, you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever natural fibers, things that they can hand dye, that type of mm -hmm. thing. Plus, they want it to be cool. Like, you know, you need to you need to be cool. Um, so you don't want to be wearing heavy you know, clothing and so on. Uh, whereas, you know, on 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 the um the uh the spaceships the spacecrafts or the space station you know everything is more technological so mm -hmm. um but i i get what people are saying i totally agree do you want anything uh, say anything else about that one chip no mm -hmm. again i'm just you know looking looking forward to rebel moon um mm -hmm. i'm i'm actually looking forward to the discourse that will unleash itself when mm -hmm. when that film comes out like because like i said it's uh it's a failed attempt for Zack Snyder's new, you know, his proposed Star Wars uh, films. So uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see how Star Wars fans uh, react to it. Well, I'm a big Zack Snyder fan. I, I'm I'm totally willing to give him yeah, you know, the opportunity. And I, the one thing I have to say about him, he really goes for it. You know, he really does. He's super yeah. passionate about it. So, yeah. you know, people could say, ah, you know, like, you know, there'll always be people who are. I mean, I think, you know, but this about me, Ro, that. I will never completely trash something because I know how much work goes into it. I may not be the biggest fan of something, but um, I'm always willing to give it a, a try. Sure. And I know, <laughs> you know, people, um, people hound on his uh, constant uh, slow motion shots, but I think, you know, there's, 
you know, I, I think that's his style. Um, a lot of his stuff is stylistic, is very, you know, kind of over the top, uh, similar to, uh, you know, you've got other directors like John Woo. You know, for a while, you know, in the 90s, you would see a lot of, you know, movies kind of mimicking John Woo style with it's either slow motion shots or people jumping out of cars with guns sideways and slow motion. So it's, it's you know, everybody's got their thing. Yeah. Ab yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Even Carl, it's not even crazy about the new Dune. And I have to say that I, you know, I went back and I watched the original Dune and I actually had quite an appreciation for it. Mm -hmm. It was panned at the time by the critics. It was like, you know, heavily panned. But when you go back and watch some of these older, you know, again, David Lynch, I think he was really going for it. I think he he was really pushing himself on that. And, you know, was it <clears throat> a masterpiece? No, but it's still it was pretty entertaining. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Uh, all right. So should I do my next one? Yes. What's your next one? Well, my next one is The Penguin. And the reason mm. why I actually I picked this one is uh I interviewed the costume designer on, she was working on another movie and I, or actually another show. And so she came on and we were chatting and she said, Oh, by the way, I'm designing the penguin. And I'm like, Oh my God, that's amazing. So I, you know, I started looking into it. So it's sort of like riffing off of the, the movie. So what happens is, is it's an upcoming American television limited series, or I have a picture. This is why I really think there's something happened here because I, I know I uploaded more than one picture. Mm -hmm. So here it is. This is actually um, Colin Farrell, which I is know, pretty it's crazy. Hard to, hard to believe. Yeah, it's amazing. The makeup on him is amazing. I'll probably get nominated for some awards. Yeah. So anyway, it's an upcoming American television series created by Lauren LaFranc for uh, Max, which I guess is HBO Max. Correct. Again, I get confused. It's based on the DC comic character, The Penguin, and it's a spinoff of the film, The Batman. So apparently in the show, it's going to just, it's going to like pick up right away, like from where mm -hmm. the movie left off. And they've been, and this is something I'm noticing they're doing, not just um, the DC, but the, you know, like for instance, I don't know if anybody has watched Peacemaker. So if you watched um, uh, the Suicide Squad, so I think it was the Suicide Squad, then it was Suicide Squad. Yeah, so confusing. Then, yeah. So then right after a Suicide Squad, they went right into Peacemaker. And so if you don't watch the, if you didn't watch the Suicide Squad, you might get a little bit confused. I suppose you could watch it, but so well, this is something new. I don't remember this when I was a kid where there would be a movie and then they would have a TV show and like WandaVision. So you'll have like, I don't know, you'll have like um, the Avengers and then you'll have like WandaVision and then you'll have like Dr. Strange and it'll pick up there and then it'll go into low key. You know what I mean? So you right. have to like, it's almost like uh, you have to hop around quite a bit. It's a little bit different than when I was a kid, but at I think, time, oh, sorry, yeah, I, th I think the Marvel cinematic universe kind of changed that aspect of movies and filmmaking. I think they have done something that has been unprecedented to be able to connect these uh, these movies and te television shows into a larger, um, uh, you know, thread of, of story. Um, I think studios have been trying to do that, you know, at least, you know, from trilogies perspective, but uh, nothing that would span, you know, the vastness that is a multi-tiered, uh, you know, storytelling um method like the marvel movies have done um you know between television shows and comics and you know there's a there's a lot of characters out there and i think this was probably the i don't say the only way to do it but i think they have had some really great success obviously dc is trying to catch up there's a difference between the you know the marvel movies and the dc films that uh for whatever reason the dc films have not uh had as uh, as great success as the marvel uh movies but um yeah it's uh it, it's it, like i said it's it's unprecedented in the way they have presented their 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 television shows and and their movies that all connect and that is no small feat um it is uh, obviously something that takes uh, some immense planning um and they have done so uh in 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 a wonderfully complex way 
uh, enough to kind of, you know, really make the fans happy that, uh, you know, especially fans that really absorb all the television shows, all the, uh, make them, you know, connect in, in a way that, uh, that is just a lot of fun to watch. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. I was just thinking, first off, like we we're talking about Zack Snyder. So, da- you know, they, one of the things that was sort of weird is he had Zack Snyder do DC and then you had James Gunn do like Guardians of the Galaxy, but then now he's doing <laughs> DC right. with um, the the Suicide Squad or Suicide Squad, not the Suicide Squad. He didn't do that one, and then he did Peacemaker, which, by the way, is such a fabulous show. Like, you know, they're now, they're is yeah, that with the toilet head uh, seat on his head. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's yes. the guy. Yeah, John Cena. And uh, it's really funny because it's, you know, he's supposed to be sort of like a, a bit of a goon and, he, you know, he's really, he, he's traumatized. Like he's basically, you know, been raised by a white supremacist, his father. Um, and, you know, so he's a bit of a goon, but, he, you know, he's a lovable goon and he's really yeah. funny. So it's one of those things. Um, uh, so anyway, <clears throat> you feel attacked. Oh, no, she's like, let ugly people work. <laughs> Are you talking about the fact that Colin Farrell, it, sorry, is this, a, is this a joke about people who shouldn't be cast if they're not ugly? <laughs> they're no, ugly? I think, I think, I think Carl was talking about how uh, to him, it was more interesting to see um, what's the other penguin, uh, Danny DeVito, because he was such a very interesting body type, interesting yep. face and the way yep. they sculpted his nose and all that stuff. And Hi, Jackie. there was, there was some. There was another comment that said, uh, "There's too much realism in in fantasy," <laughs> which I, you know, uh, I can I can understand. I I think that there. Okay, I think like for instance, Game of Thrones. There has been some discussion about that show because the showrunners decided they wanted it to be grounded and and less fantastical, even though there's like dragons and there's mm-hmm. white walkers and stuff. So I think there's some argument to be said for that. I think whenever I've done analysis, what I've said is once they set the tone and they make the decision that they're making, then they have to kind of stick with that. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, if you decide you want this to be a grounded show, uh, like for instance, Wheel of Time, I don't know if anyone's watching it right now. It's really good. I think they do a pretty good job of keeping it grounded at the same time, even though it's a fantasy show. I mean, they don't have dragons at least i don't think they do but it, there's magic right and there's um you know good like and evil. Bull, bull creatures like in the first yeah oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah yeah sorry yeah, they yeah. do you're right yes they yeah. do have yeah they do have those so um uh but i think they do a pretty good job like you know i would say there's gravity they eat food you know they they mm-hmm. have running water or they maybe you know they have to you know they have uh they have to go to the bathroom <laughs> plump plumbing <laughs> plumbing you know so they you know they have they have sort of what anything that they use is basically very earth-like and, but yet it's maybe in a slightly medieval setting. So Mm -hmm. there may be regressed a little bit. They have to use Trollocs. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. So, I mean, that's, I guess that's an argument you can make. I think it's just a matter of it's, it's dependent on what the showrunners want to do. But I was reading recently that George Martin, for instance, he's so tickled with how house of the dragon has turned out, even though he wrote the source material, he just is delighted by how that's all turned out. So, mm. you know, I guess you can make the argument, you can have the source material and you can have the show and they don't necessarily have to be the same thing. They can still be enjoyed, but. Yeah. And I know a lot of people <clears throat> that uh, are watching the show and are pretty upset that, uh, that they're not really matching or not really going with the, um, the source material. But I, you know, I started watching the first, uh, the first season and I, I, you know, not knowing what the story is or what the source material is. I, I was enjoying it. Well, I thought it was pretty good. And then, but season two is amazing. It's really good. And I always thought it looked amazing. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. costume wise, I always thought these are amazing. Like the design I thought looked amazing. Uh, Beautiful, gorgeous costumes, really bright, vivid, you know, like all the things that I love to see. But then you still have those moments where it is dark and it's kind of, Mm -hmm. obviously you have to have those, those moments. So I don't know what you guys think in the chat about it, but I, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. So, all right. So I did the penguin. I didn't have a lot to say about that one, Ro. Do you want to pick one? I'll pick a picture for you and then we can um, talk about it. Yeah. Jude Law, Star Wars Skeleton Crew. Sure. Looking forward to that. I'm, you know, obviously, as you can tell from my background, I'm a big Star Wars fan. So I'm looking forward, always looking forward to new Star Wars. Um, this one is intriguing because we really don't have a lot of information from this. Um, you know what? When you 
when you put this picture in my in the uh in, on link on twitter i was like i have no idea what this is yeah so we haven't had any leaked images we haven't had a trailer no teasers nothing and i think this is the only picture that was released uh like two years ago that uh that they were working on it and i don't know you know there's been i don't know with with the entire industry there's been delays between you know covid protocols and and strikes etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh this one has me intrigued because obviously they announced um that uh, jude law was going to be you know starring in this show um and jude law is obviously a, a big draw for uh moviegoers and i'm really intrigued to to kind of uh, sink my teeth into this one because uh, we really don't know a lot you know, it's uh, people have uh, said that it was going to be it's going to be Goonies in space. Um, oh. He is in charge of uh, guiding a group of force sensitive children back to safety uh, or back home or something like that. So it, it's going to be interesting. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, how uh, how the story kind of pans out. It does take place in the time area that we are playing with currently with uh, with the Mandalorian and, uh -huh. uh, and Andor. So there might be a little bit of a, you know, uh, narrative crossover. But, um, yeah, this is this is one I'm, I'm looking forward to. And I think uh, the the release date has been pushed uh, several times. I think we're we won't be getting this until maybe fall of next year. Okay, and but it is still on IMDb, like it's still in development. Do you think? Yeah, I mean, I usually go by IMDb, or yeah, Wikipedia. usually it's pretty accurate. Yeah, and I, I know a lot of shows have been pushed, and not even just because I think of the strike, but I think COVID ca caused a lot of issues for a lot yeah. of shows. So we're not necessarily where we would be have been would have been absolutely right and like i said i think one of the things that intrigues me is is that we don't have a lot of information on it mm -hmm. or images or or any you know anything yeah like, like that, that one's even really kind of blurry so it looks like a screen grab or something mm -hmm. well i'm i'll be really interested in that show now i know how many i know you're watching ashoka how many shows how many star wars shows are you following at the moment uh well the only the only one out now is uh is ahsoka i'm saying and it wrong ahsoka would you say? Oh, Ash <laughs> Ashoka. Ashoka. <laughs> Ashoka. Yeah, it's Ashoka. it's Ashoka. <laughs> Ashoka. I haven't seen it. I'm going to watch it. I promise. Yeah. Um. Man, that is a that is a loaded question. Is the Ahsoka worth watching? Oh wow, Andrew. Oh, Hale. thanks so much, that's Andrew. Nice. Very nice. Oh, that's lovely. I appreciate that. Sorry, awesome. I was trying to highlight natural, and then um. Yeah, and uh, well, I'm. Uh, I have to say, okay, for me, Andor is the top. Okay, I haven't seen Ahsoka, so I'm going to say Andor for me. Then I'm going to probably say The Mandalorian, season one and two only. Season one and two only. <laughs> uh, I I'm not a big fan of um, uh, Book of Boba Fett. No, I would probably put that one toward the bottom, and then maybe I would put uh, the other one. Um, <clears throat> Ben Kenobi, mm -hmm. maybe above the book of Boba Fett. Yeah, that's probably. I don't know. Am I missing any? No, that's that's probably the same thing. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, you know, I I can't answer. Is it worth watching? I mean, for me, everything is worth watching until until I'm finished watching and I either like it or I don't like it, mm -hmm. and I'll I'll make my opinion known. But uh, I'm always. I'm always eager to kind of, you know, pop in some new Star Wars. Um, ah Ahsoka's, um, I think Ahsoka is definitely worth watching. There's some some interesting tidbits on there, and I'm hoping that a lot of people who uh, who have not been part of the Star Wars family through the animated shows, because Ahsoka really relies on the uh, the Rebels animated show because the characters are from that show. Um, but I was worried that there was going to be a lot of exposition, a lot of, uh, dumbing down or watering down of some of the storylines, um, for casual fans that may have not been part of the rebels family, but they, they've been doing a pretty good job of not, you know, not over explaining things to, to casual fans. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure I'll check it out. I, um, I just, um, 
you know, like I was watching Foundation, as I mentioned earlier, which, you know, if you guys are, uh, it's not exactly like the books I understand, but it, it, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And I was saying that anything Jared Harrison, I'll always watch Jared Harris is just fantastic. He's Richard Harris's son. Oh, so cool, he's, yeah. he's the star of it. Yeah. So he's just, uh, everything he, he's in, I always really, really enjoy. He was also in Fringe. I don't know if anybody watched Fringe, but that was another really great sci-fi oh, yeah. show. All right. So should I do another one then? Yes. Yes. Uh, hi, Jackie. Yes. So I do have a new background. I was working on it over the summer and I just got my hair done. So <laughs> Jackie's so observant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jackie. I get, It's kind of like my, I decided to kind of go get a rocker style. <laughs> I'm going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me pick another show. So the next one I'm doing is Fallout. Now, I don't know a lot about this show. There's not a lot of, you know, tongue wagging online about it. But what is uh, why it's gaining some interest from people. Let me just see if I, I think I have one picture. That's the only picture that this was on Twitter, apparently. So Followed is an upcoming 2024 American post-apocalyptic drama television series developed by Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan for Amazon Prime. So why that's sort of gaining some interest is they're the showrunners of Westworld, seasons one through four. And, but as many of you know, Westworld got canceled. So they're onto a new project. Uh, Lisa Joy and, and Jonathan Nolan are a married couple and Jonathan Nolan is Christopher Nolan's brother. So, you know, obviously they come from a background of uh, really talented people. Uh, this is one of those shows that is, it says it's based on a role-playing video game franchise created by Interplay Entertainment and now owned by Bethesda Software. So I don't know the video game. I'm not a video game player. I mean, I love the show The Last of Us. And obviously there's other shows I've watched that are based on video games that I've really enjoyed. So I don't know much about it. So I don't know if anyone in the chat knows it. But it says, this is what really intrigued me. It says, the show depicts the aftermath of a nuclear war in an alternate history of a 1950s-esque retro-futuristic world. I mean, that sounds like a pretty cool yeah. description, don't you think? Yeah, yeah absolutely. A so, uh, so well, first of all, I always like dystopia. I always love dystopia. I'm usually like right there with dyspo dystopia. But it's it so gray. <laughs> And lifeless. <laughs> it is great and lifeless. <laughs> but I I always enjoy them. And now it doesn't sound like there's zombies in this. So in that way, it won't be like The Last of Us. But obviously, right. there must be some type of... Um, there is something going on here that would create sure. the challenge for it to be a video game. So maybe there's some kind of monsters. I don't know. So yeah. if anyone's in the chat knows, let me know. And then again, I was mentioning there's not really any like, you know, household names in this. So the person who's starring in it, I have never seen them before. I have no idea. Their name is Walton Goggins, which by the way, Walton Goggins, is that like not sound like a Hobbit name? Like really? Right. Yeah. Okay. Walton the big, Goggins. Walton Goggins. The the big name in it is Kyle McLaughlin though, who we were chatting okay. earlier about. Uh, <laughs> I love Kyle McLaughlin because of course he was in the original Dune. Mm-hmm. The other person who's in it, her name is Ella Purnell, and she played Sheen Jackie in Yellow Jackets. I don't know if anyone's seen Yellow Jackets. Oh, yes. She's, she's wonderful. One, she's so good in it. Yes. So this is a starring role she has. Like So Walton and her are kind of the, the male and female protagonists in it. So I think this is going to be really interesting. And costume design-wise, I was a little bit excited because the person doing the design is Amy Westcott, and she did both... Uh, the, Black Swan and The Rustler, which were, you know, phenomenal movies. So it sounds like they've got a pretty amazing costume design behind it. But as you see, we we don't really have anything. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> this is sometime in the future. There's been some kind of, you know, nuclear war. Now, it's interesting, though, because when we do apocalypses, I can't remember the last time there was an apocalypse that was based on nuclear war. I mean, because that's something out of like the 80s, right? Like, right. Uh, from when we were teenagers. But in terms of, you know, mostly it's like zombie apocalypse or viruses, a virus. Right. Yeah. But uh, it's it's good to go back to the basics, I guess. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. She says, so, okay, thanks, Natural. She said, Fallout has atomic zombies and mutated animals and stuff. Okay, there are survivors, but some of them are more messed up than others. So that's very cool. Uh, very nice. And I usually... I think I, I remember playing I the usually game... I dystopias as well. Yeah, I remember playing the game years ago, <laughs> but... That's so true, Carl. <laughs> Very true. Carl, you'd be surprised by the stuff I watch. My husband's always like, you're watching that on YouTube? What are you doing? I'm watching like lawn mowing videos, a guy going and mowing people's lawns. <laughs> He's like, doesn't that stress you out? Time like, lapse. No, it relaxes me. It relaxes me. Time lapse of cleaning other people's lawns. Yeah, or I watch the you know, house cleaning. No, I actually enjoy uh I enjoy scary movies. I love them. They I find they actually kind of relax me. That's funny. <laughs> so if it's like if it's scary, like it's horror sci-fi, I like it's sort of like a perfect storm for me. It's just perfectly uh yeah. <laughs> I do. I laugh about the end of times. <laughs> Well, if you can't, you know, if you can't laugh, what are you going to do? Exactly. So would you watch that show? Do you think that sounds like something you would be into, Ro? Yeah, yeah, Follow? absolutely. You know, it's funny because you mentioned, um, what's the other show, the other dystopian show that you just mentioned? The, video uh, the game, Last of Us? The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. I, think I, I think I watched two episodes and it was so gritty that I felt like taking a shower ever after every episode. Yeah. And I just, I didn't finish it. I couldn't finish it. And I think... Um, you know, kudos to the production team, I guess, because it really, you know, it, it really ex um, exemplified how grimy the world was in that world. Oh, I would. I would love that. So yeah. so natural saying there's a guy that cleans out drains outside. So he goes in and he snakes. <laughs> he snakes all of the sewer <laughs> grit like grates or something. That's your, like that's your jam. That's your jam. Well, there's a guy named um, he, there's a guy named Mike. He used to do a show called Dirty Jobs which is a big American show, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, Andrew says you need to finish it. What what, were you, what do you need to finish? Oh, uh, Last of Us. I, only did, I loved it. I only, I only did two episodes, two or three episodes, I think. And then I stopped. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of scratch and sniff on The Last of Us. It's so true. They yeah. did such a good job. There's one scene, which you wouldn't have seen because it was later in the season. They basically took a mall and they just totally trashed it. Like, I don't even know. The production design on it was absolutely amazing. It looked like a trashed mall and mm -hmm. it was all very practical. They did such a good job. I'm sure so, they they <laughs> they probably just went to a mall and said, I mean, there's a lot of malls in, in the uh, in the Chicagoland area that are no longer malls um that would be great to to shoot in yeah like there's a there's a mall in um uh amazing was it called uh stranger things it was at, like an old 80s mall that had mm -hmm. been sort of stuck in a time capsule like it mm -hmm. had they hadn't renovated it or anything yeah. and so they went there and they said hey can we use this for a location so they um you know because it looked like exactly from the 80s sure fun stuff dude what oh Jackie says, dude was smelling the nasty from the house. I was, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, totally. that's so funny. Okay, so let me get another uh, picture for you. Do you want me to pick one for you? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I, I, I forgot what I picked. Okay. So here, here. <laughs> All dun, right. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Another Star Wars. Lo and mm -hmm. behold. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Um, Great name, by the way. I love, I love the name Acolyte. So the Acolyte is another one of those Star Wars shows that we don't know a lot about, although we probably know more about the Acolyte than um, Skeleton Crew. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, but uh, if uh, there's one, so I did not see the trailer. There was an unfinished trailer that they showed only to people that were at Star Wars Celebration. And I happened to uh, to find a, a, a you know cell phone video of it somebody had uh, snuck out and posted and it actually looks pretty, pretty amazing. Um, it, like I said, uh, some of the special effects were unfinished, but it, it looks like, you know, whether this show is uh, more produced uh, or more along the ways of being finished than skeleton crew um, remains to be seen. But um, the Acolyte has some uh, really great actors in it. The cast was announced uh, a while ago. Um, thanks for hanging with us, Andrew. May the force be with you. 
we'll see you out there in the Twitterverse. But um, yeah, the thanks, Andrew. The uh, the the acolyte's going to be uh, interesting. One of the things that I really enjoy, especially in my Star Wars, I don't like I don't like it uh, when Star Wars is too goofy, uh, when it's got too many jokes, when it's got too many cute uh, green aliens with daddy issues. I like my Star Wars serious, and that's probably why. Um, I enjoy Andor so much because it's uh, it takes the uh, source material serious. It's uh, it's got some you know really good drama. The trailer for the Acolyte, um, as far as I could so tell, you're not, a, you're not a, a Return of the Jedi. No, I love Return of the Jedi. I love the original trilogy uh, okay. for for all it's worth. I think um, you know obviously we were younger back then, and mm -hmm. and oh that's true. Mm -hmm. Muppet Muppets didn't scare us the way they do now. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah the acolyte looks uh looks interesting it's got um um carrie carrie ann, carrie ann moss, moss. You, you, so yeah. she, she was uh she was it's interesting. she's not this the last jedi yeah it looks premiere? like she's uh she looks like it's a last jedi premiere um she was hanging around the premiere and people were kind of uh you know, what surprise you and what you doing here. Exactly. Um, and I have to do a shout out to her cause she's Canadian. So, Oh, very nice. Lovely cool. Canadian gal. So she is, uh, yeah, still wearing her matrix costume, mm -hmm. but, uh, that's funny. Um, it works for her. De definitely works for me too. Yeah, she is. Uh, well, you know what I love about her? It's funny. Cause, um, uh, there was another show she was in recently, and she was so good. Oh, was it uh, Jessica Jones? Yes. Oh, she's she's she great. So good in that. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not then, sure who the characters, who the actors are are playing, um, mm -hmm. but, um, it, you know, it looks pretty damn good. Now, what's, the, what's this picture here with this little child and her? So this little child is an older picture, but she is, uh, this picture is from Logan, the Wolverine Marvel movie. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Yeah. So she is, um, she's, I should have found an older picture of her, but this is from the Logan movie. But this actress uh, is uh, one of the actresses that will be in the Acolyte. So the young actress is will be in the acolyte as well. Correct. Yeah. Oh, but they might. Um, but if she was maybe like ten at the time of Logan, she's probably got to be a teenager now. Yeah, or or late teenager for sure. But late teenager. Uh, yeah, you can you know you can Google. Yeah. yeah. Um, some of the um, some of the on set images were leaked uh, a year and a half ago, or or a little under a year ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and there were you know like this this Wookiee. Um, Jedi per se was, uh, I guess people were not liking, uh, some of the costumes that appeared and some of the makeup that was, uh, that was leaked. Some of the shots that were leaked, um, people were, you know, saying that, uh, they looked uh, worse than the worst cosplay out there. Um, but, um, you know, we, we won't be able to tell for sure until, uh, until it releases some of the yes. detail. Yeah. Some of the detail in that picture. Yeah. Um, um I kind of think it looks good. Uh, you know, now I have to be, I have, I always try to be careful because, you know, there's lots of shows that have uh, leaked photos. And then honestly, when you see them on camera, like they look oh, totally yeah, different. Totally different. They yeah, really totally. do. Yeah. yeah. I think that Wookiee looks pretty good though. Like, do we know who this Wookiee is? No. And I think, um, you know, there's a series of star Wars books, uh, under the, the, name of the high Republic that uh, these are stories that take place a couple thousand years before the star Wars that we are familiar with. And I have a feeling this is one of the characters uh, because the acolyte also takes place uh, many years before the events of, uh, of uh, the star Wars that we know. Oh, okay. Okay. By the way, do you know how many productions Disney has in the pipe for for Star Wars, like I know, are they planning on doing more movies, or are they? Uh... Yeah. The, so the show Ahsoka now yeah. is going to end up with a movie. Okay. Um, so that is one. They're also planning on doing a Ray movie, which takes place after the sequel trilogy. Um, they are also planning. Oh, on so a, she's coming back. She's coming back. Okay. And then they are also <laughs> planning a um, High Republic movie, which is basically, you know, some story elements from uh a long longer time ago in a galaxy far far away i you know it's sort of crazy when you think about it that 
you know, I wonder what George Lucas thinks of this. He must be just like, I mean, I know he made a lot of money, but um, he must just be like, this is so crazy. Like, I can't even, I couldn't even have ever, ever, ever imagined this. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm sure he expected it. I mean, there's no, you know, when he sold Star Wars, I'm sure, you know, I mean, he, I, I know he wanted to be part of the process and Disney kind of shut him out, um, which would make any director bitter. Um, but um, it is what it is. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, so Dar uh, National Selection says that same girl was in Logan was in his Dark Materials. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, I'm a, I don't watch that show, but my husband does. So that you, now that you mentioned that, that sounds right. But Carl just <laughs> said something to me and I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, no. Sorry, it was actually natural selection. She said, Heidi, did you know there might be a Blade Runner TV show that might come out? Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> I got to look, look for some news on that. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. But it was funny because um, I was just noticing when you were, you gave me a picture, or sorry, you were telling me one of your movies that you're going to do, and I noticed Harrison Ford is in it. And I was like, oh, my God, Harrison Ford is in it. Yeah. When we get to that one. Sure. I'm like, sorry, do you have anything else you wanted to add? Mm, no, like I said, it, uh, you know, I'm always, uh, interested in more star Wars until I'm not mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry, yeah. cat, cat, yellow Ranger Ranger. There will well, be another Ray movie. It'll be really interesting. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, Daisy Ridley's gone off and had quite a successful career, like outside of star Wars. Actually, I think pretty much most of the cast, like obviously, uh, Oliver or what's his name. Um, like guy plays Bobby. Oscar Oscar Isaac Oscar Isaac oh, the man amazing. the man with two first names he is and he <laughs> does and he's in Dune and you know I just love yeah. everything I've seen him in there's a really great movie with him where he plays like an aspiring composer musician mm. and I can't remember what it's called but it's so good yeah and it's just it's like first of all he's an amazing singer so that was kind of cool and then the other actor who was in it um who played this the stormtrooper has gone on to do very, very well as well. But I yeah. don't know his name. I can't remember it. John Boyega. John Boyega. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> so actually, I think he's in um, that. Uh, what's the the one about? Um, oh, it's a horror movie on a ranch with a spaceship. <laughs> it's really, really weird. <laughs> um, I think I'm pretty sure he's in that one. Is he? Yeah. I, I don't think he's in that one. It's called Nope. Not? Nope. Oh, maybe that's Daniel Kayua. Yeah. Maybe I'm getting him confused. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Okay, nope. Yeah, sorry, that's not him. Mm -hmm. I did see him in something recently, though. I'm trying to think what it was. Anyway, so good on them that they're all doing really well. I'm glad for sure. them. Yeah. They clone Tyrone. That's, yeah. That's yes, they clone say. Tyrone. Have you guys seen that? That not movie yet. is no. so crazy. Yeah. It's fun. crazy. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Thanks so yeah. much for mentioning that one. Oh, God. Blade Runner is one of the all-time great movies, not just sci-fi. Prime True. Ridley Scott. I detect yeah. no lies. Yeah, and uh, if anybody who's on here watches my show regularly knows that my husband and I like kind of met because of Blade Runner. Like We met through friends, but we bonded and fell in love because of Blade Runner. <laughs> And they he's were, a and he's a replicant, <laughs> and he is well. No, I don't know. I don't feel he is. I don't think he is. <laughs> I know everyone argues that. I don't have feel you give he him, is. Have you given him the test? I haven't given him the test, so <laughs> I'm go. probably wrong. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> I know that Harrison Ford and really Scott clashed over that whole thing, but that's where the late lovers. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, Carl, you're so funny. Okay, so let's get to the next one before I get too drunk. I've only had one. I've only had one drink so far. Okay. It is not maple syrup. <laughs> uh, all right. So is it your turn? Ro? No, what is it's, it? It's your turn. It's my turn. Okay. I so did, the next one acolyte. I'm going to do. You did Acolyte. So the next one. I'm, okay. This one. I, I don't have them in any order. This one is my most anticipated show okay. of 2024 because it has everything I love. And it is Shogun. And oh, okay. okay, so first off, I grew up uh, in you know the seventies and eighties as a little girl. My my dad was a huge James Clavell lover, and James Clavell is the author of the book Shogun. 
And then they made a television series, like a limited series, mini series, we called it in those days, starring Richard Chamberlain, who right. played the main character in it. And um, so it was a phenomenon. Like yeah. it was like it so was. famous. Mm -hmm. And uh, Toshiro Mifun played the main character in that. So he was a big, like, um, star of Japanese films. I'm not okay. I, I don't know if he was in like uh, the Seven Samurai. He's he was in all the big Japanese films at the time. So he was a pretty big deal. So now they're doing a remount of it. And I got wind of it. I think I got wind of it like last year. I was doing a live stream and one of I was talking to Siam Costumes and they were telling me about, you know, that they were going to be working with uh, Shogun. So it was shot in Vancouver. Anyway, it was supposed to come out in 2023, but because of the strike and everything, it got delayed. So now it's coming out in 2024. The new one is going to be starring Cosmo Jarvis. So he'll be playing the part that Richard Chamberlain would have played in uh, the original 1980 version. And, um, you know, I've only seen this guy in one thing. I saw him in Lady Macbeth, which mm -hmm. was a great movie. So, yes, exactly. He was in Akira Kurosawa's film, Seven Samurai. Yojimbo. And also, like, you know, bringing all this back is that uh, many of you probably know that George Lucas, when he was in film school, you know, watched a lot of Kurosawa. And so he was inspired by that. And that's sort of like how he, you know, created Star Wars because um, he was sort of like... Uh, a samurai story. That's why a lot of them wear like sort of Japanese style clothing. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, so it's got it. So it's got that. It's got my nostalgia thing, which is very cool. But also, it is play. You know, it takes place in um, uh, in the Edo period, which is like a very very cool period of time. And of course the costumes are going to be like amazing. So that's the thing that I'm probably the most excited about. So the story says, I've got a little synopsis here. So Shogun follows the collision of two ambitious men from different worlds and then mysterious female samurai, Jack Blackthorne, a risk taking English sailor who ends up shipwrecked in Japan, a land whose unfamiliar culture will ultimately redefine him. Lord Taranaga, a shrewd, powerful daimo, at odds with his own dangerous political rivals, and Lady Mariko, a woman with invaluable skills, but dishonorably, dishonorable, sorry, family ties, who must prove her value and allegiance. So I was mentioning, so Cosmo Jarvis is playing the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the American character, or the English character, I should say. And then Hiro Yuki Sonata, many of you will know him. He is like in so many different things. The, the thing that I know him for the most is The Last Samurai, but he was also in Westworld and John Wick. He is playing the main character. And then um, Tota Mariko, uh, I don't know this actress. She's a newer actress. She's from New Zealand. Her name is Anna Sawai. She'll be playing the, the, the female character. So it's sort of like the three of them. This will be a limited series and it's going to be on FX on Hulu. <laughs> Just now that we've like, got that straight. Now that we've got that straight. So like, like, so what is with, uh, Disney is like got all the shows. Yeah. Disney owned. They've Disney got owned. all the shows. Disney and owned, yeah. so, yeah, streaming services are very, very hot right now. Jack Black. No, Jack Black, please. No, he's not in it. Jack, <laughs> Jack Black Th Thorn. <laughs> Yeah, so that Jack John Blackthorne was an English captain sailing under a Dutch flag who then runs into the Jesuits. Tora Naga. Tiger in Japanese. Naga, chief, chief tiger. Look at our chat. All oh, Carl is smart. Carl yeah. is smarty pants. If I ever need to ask a question, I just ask Carl. Um, people are staying, uh, starting to think that Disney is evil. <laughs> Well, are they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Starting? <laughs> well, um, oh, and the other thing is, so the costume designer on that, his name is Carlos Rosaria, and he's working, he worked on Don't Breathe, 
the girl in the spider web. Oh, I have some pictures. Let me show you guys. So the only pictures I have so far. Um, I know I keep saying this, but honest to God, I uploaded pictures and they're gone. It's so weird. Okay, so I, I here are just some of the close-up pictures from you know Cosmos how they're going to be amazing. That you know they this is a thing that I'm noticing they're doing. They did this with Lord of the Rings the TV series, so they <coughs> excuse me, guys. <clears throat> They'll do a close-up of the character, but they won't have their head in it. <laughs> I wonder if it's not actually them. It's just a, you know. It's possible that it is a body devil doing right. it for sure. Yeah. Just, just that might the, that might be a yeah. good point. So they but they did the exact same thing. So here's some close-ups of the here, let me now, just now that this. looks like a Jedi outfit. Exactly. Exactly. So <clears throat> it's uh the Edo, the Edo period. Um where am I here now again? And then I've got this one that you guys probably recognize. This, this is, I think, the one that's on the <clears throat> the poster. Mm. Uh, the Samurai helmet, of course, which, you know, is very much like Darth Vader's helmet. There you go. They would oftentimes decorate the helmets with different shapes. So you have a moon on there. That's no moon. <laughs> Get it? You don't think it's see a moon? What, see what <clears throat> I did there? That's no moon. You, I see what you did there. Actually, and you're right, because it could be horns. <laughs> I did see what you did there. You're so funny, bro. So, yeah, really beautiful costumes. And the other thing is that the weapons are going to probably be very, very, very cool mm. as well. So you can see uh, beautiful, like, gorgeous brocades the, oh did you know so i i did find that um and or did have sort of like it, uh, on coruscant they had sort of a, a bit of an asian sort of influence as well did yeah. you find that yeah with the especially, hair and the yeah especially during um mon mothma's apartment um, yes very um a lot of asian design goes mm -hmm. went in there um yeah it was it was uh interesting yeah, it was funny because, you know, I grew up watching Star Wars and it wasn't until I started kind of looking into the costumes and I was like, oh, my God, they're actually wearing kind of like, you know, Hakama split pant and a, an obi and then they're wearing the over robe, which I, I can't I, I can't remember. I think it's called a Furosode or something is the name of the man's jacket that they wear very much like a samurai. Mm hmm. So I, I, uh, I didn't notice that until I was older. Like it just, I, you know, I had no understanding of it, but when I started to really dig into it, that's when I sort of got, um, Jedi equals historical old fashioned period piece. And I think that's one of the things that I love about George Lucas is how he takes, you know, real world mythology and, uh, lore and kind of sprinkles it into his fantasy. Yeah, I, I really love that. And I think that's why, and also he's telling, um, you know, the hero's journey, which, you know, this is the other thing that I haven't seen the movie, but the Sam Seven Samurai, uh, it sort of tells that sort of story, the Ronin, you know, mm -hmm. he's like outcast from like, I don't know, who's Daimo, what have you, and he's walking the earth kind of thing to find purpose or what have you. And and <clears throat> so I always thought it was, I, I just think it's really interesting how the west will oftentimes you know turn to the east to sort of for inspiration and on in our stories and um as a way of storytelling yeah absolutely who is this here it says cat says um i've seen amazing cosplays of darth vader and star troop stormtroopers as samurai I've got a, I've got a Darth Vader as a samurai figure somewhere mm -hmm. back here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Darth Vader, obviously the helmet, you can see the helmet, you can see the oh, uh, yes. inspirations to, uh, to that mm -hmm. character. Absolutely. There's actually, uh, there's a really famous Canadian, uh, West coast, like they, uh, they call it S a West coast native indigenous artist who took Darth Vader and did it like, uh, as a native, Mm. costume it was really really fascinating wow. actually yeah uh or maybe it was the stormtrooper it was one of them it was like yeah. one of the armors they took it and made it like west coast native so that was pretty cool cool very nice please stop queuing on stuff carl <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome uh a lot of samurai movies and books used westerns as inspirations 
Uh, so it's more like a cultural dialogue. And that's really cool. Well, that's the thing, like, you know, the spaghetti Western. Mm hmm. And then you've got the Japanese, you know, story. So, like, that's the other thing, like, I remember reading is that George watched a lot of spaghetti westerns growing up, which, you know, like, so the Seven Samurai could be the, uh, what's the, the Magnificent Seven, right. you know. It's sure. sort of like, I think we borrow from each other sort of in many ways. Yes, exactly, Carl. It's a nice little circle. It is a great circle. I love it. Circle of life. <laughs> Now that I know you can sing, I'm going to make you sing more. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. So, what should we go next? Let's do another. Hey, guys, and in the chat, if there's a show that you're excited about, let us know as well. Okay. Yeah. So, I have um, the next one for you. This is, you know, okay. Again, I knew nothing about this when mm. you posted this. Yes. So, so cool. This is the. Follow up to the Mad Max, uh, you know, movie. Um, you know, when when Mad Max came out, this last one, um, Charlize Theron really ran away with the role. She was uh, great as Furiosa. Mm -hmm. Fur Furiosa, Furiosa. <laughs> How do you say that? But uh, great Furio character. Furiosa. Oh, that sounds yeah. right to me. So great character and now. By the um, way, I don't know if this is an official poster. I just grabbed this. It. I don't know that it is. <clears throat> yeah. Well, is it says May twenty twenty four? Yeah, that could be. She needs some uh, sunscreen. Definitely. Yeah. So Anya Taylor Joy, who is just you know an amazing actress, mm -hmm. and then Crimps Hemsworth, of course, who rarely does any wrong i've seen one bad movie with him but other than that he pretty much hits it out of the ballpark sure yeah so you know this uh you know and i is uh george miller directing it how long is that guy gonna keep directing yeah he, it just says be... from the mastermind of george miller yeah but i thought he was he had directing credit but uh, uh i can look it up it says uh Yeah, George Miller. Yep, he is. Well, how old do you think he is now? God. He's not that old. He's he does, Yeah, he doesn't look that old, but uh, 78 years he's old. He's 78. Wow. Yeah. Well, if you love something, you know, why not? Keep going. Absolutely. Yeah. Keeps you alive. But, um, yeah, so this looks very interesting. I think, uh, now, you know, like I said. It's a prequel? Yes, it looks like a prequel. So, um See more ugly people. <laughs> well, you're seeing her from the back. She's probably pretty stunning from the front. Sure. Yeah. And, the, and so. if you had staples, no, I, actually, I don't, I think that's just her hair. Yeah. Like I was like, I thought something. at first it was, she had staples in the back of her head, but I think that's yeah. just her haircut. Yeah. But it's cool to, to have this director kind of go back to, to this world, you know, mm -hmm. Mad Max, the three movies that he did, plus this new one with uh tom hardy um so that should uh that should be pretty interesting i think uh you know the the you know obviously this first one um was uh well received by the fans yeah. um there's a lot of practical you know stunts and effects that were you know created uh for this uh for this movie i think they're going to you know should be really a lot of fun to watch on screen yeah, it says it was shot in New South Wales. Mm. Um, I'd be, I'll be interested to know if Jenny Bevan, who did the costumes for the original, and she won mm. an Academy Award, which, by the way, was very unusual for that time to, you know, for a science fiction show, like movie, to win Best Costume Design. It rarely happens. Usually it goes know. to dramas or something like that, right? Yeah. So that was pretty cool. So I wonder if she's going to be working on that because she, if she does, that'll be awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so the this looks uh, this looks like a lot of fun. For sure. Yeah. All right. So my next one, which is my last one. Sorry, guys. Oh, so this one I saw a trailer for it about a month ago. It's called the Regime. Hmm. And. I don't know if it's like, I mean, I was, it's obviously a statement on what's going on in the world right now. Um, you know, Canada, we're, we actually are in a, we're having a lot of issues, but 
(laughs) I think it's sort of a statement on, you know, what's happening. So the premise of this, the regime is an upcoming miniseries. So they said miniseries uh, from HBO starring Kate Winslet, Andrew Riseborough and Matthias Schoenertz and Hugh Grant. The series depicts a year within the palace of a crumbling authoritarian regime. So Kate Winslet, apparently she, you know, she's been working a lot with HBO. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was funny because I was <clears throat> in my latest video, I'm talking about this, that, you know, in the old days, uh, all the top talent, all the top actors and directors and cinematographers and so on would work in film. And then maybe the tier twos would work in TV. Mm-hmm. But now have you noticed this? row that a lot of them are you know kind of moving towards series television we're moving towards streaming uh, series yeah i think the, the the process is a little the the lines have been blurred for a while mm-hmm. um you know television was very you know structured and low-key and um low-key not low-key yes low-key there's a difference <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, the, the the lines are starting to blur when it comes to television production. Um, I think it's uh, you know they've they've developed television to be a little bit more prestigious um, when it comes to you know the stories and the interests. Um, as far as I can tell, I think uh, you know directors and some actors are are not afraid to to come down to the small screen. And I think you know when it comes to streaming services, I think a lot of the the big streamers really um you know take that into account i think they they don't shoot these things as television shows they are you know a lot of people have described them as you know several small smaller films and and you know when they're done well you can tell the production value the writing the the costumes uh you can definitely tell that it's not just your run-of-the-mill television show although you know they they are on on the small screen but i think that line is starting to blur has been for a while yeah yeah, so like uh, Kate Winslet, she's done like I think like three shows for HBO. Like the, um, I have I haven't seen them, but um, you know she's sort of a, she's a darling of of Hollywood and and you know always has been known for critically acclaimed films. And so when she attaches herself to a project, it, it you I assume it's going to be really really good. Now the one thing I want to say when I watch the trailer is it feels a little bit like the great in that it's not taking itself too seriously. Mm -hmm. There feel, there feels like there's some humor in there, maybe dark humor. So it'll be interesting to see what the tone is that they set when they, when they um, do it. Uh, Because it looks from what I can tell from the trailer that she's this authoritarian figure and she's in the middle, like she's having a nervous breakdown or something. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh i think it's gonna be it might be campy i definitely think the costumes look amazing they're colorful so, very colorful she actually makes a quip actually in the trailer because the uh martha plimpton if you guys know martha mm. plimpton who she's fabulous um she she arrives she's she plays the secretary of state for the united states and she arrives and she's like oh you're oh, that's a lovely shade of blue you're wearing or something. She makes a comment about her, the blue because it's, it's a slightly different blue. Mm-hmm. So uh, Kate Kate Winslet is wearing this sort of beautiful, like teal, very, you know, brilliant teal color, while uh, Martha Plinton is, is more of a, a, a bright blue. So already, like, we're, you know, we're dealing with some storytelling with the colors of the of the costume you can see here she's got the Mm. heavy gold braid and everything but it's got that bit of a militaristic look to it so yeah it'll be really really interesting and also it's sort of fun it'll be fun to see kate winslet who usually plays like a sweetheart Mm -hmm. to play sort of a uh, a villain (laughs) she's another (laughs) one of those performers that i can watch her in anything oh yeah absolutely she's so good I was thinking about her the, today, actually, She in The Reader, uh, which is such a great role for her, because you do kind of really root for her. You mm-hmm. root for her, even though she's sort of... And why I was thinking about it is because <laughs> because um, last week uh, they did a standing ovation for this, well, for this Nazi in our oh, parliament. Yeah. They didn't know he was a Nazi. So yeah. I was thinking about that because I'm, I was like thinking of Kate Winslet's character in the reader being um, even though he has his love affair with her, she was 
at the same time, like following orders and did just horrific things. And, but at the same time, you kind of in a way root for her and you feel sorry for her. So she's just, you know, she's just brilliant, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, hey guys, let me know if any of these mcdonald's movies you equal as nutrition <laughs> too let me know if there's any of these shows that you guys are excited to see i posted actually on um on my youtube channel on the on the community channel page i posted that like my favorite show of 2024 was probably going to be shogun and i had some you know pretty cool like one person posted that uh there's a what's that show called um, it's based on a book about he's like the son of God, uh, Zeus or something, the Olympians or something. That's mm -hmm. apparently a lot of people are really into that. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, um, Percy Jackson, Percy Jackson. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's another upcoming show. Yeah. Now, and all uh, honestly too, there's a lot of, uh, returning shows. There's tons of returning shows in 2024, but mm -hmm. we're kind of looking at the new shows. Yeah. Uh, Natural Selection says, I'm looking for the, the Benegurit show that will be coming out on HBO sometime. I don't know that show. No, neither do I. We'll have to ask the Googles. <laughs> oh, they created NASA. Well, apparently uh, we have, we're harboring a bunch of Nazis in Canada. So, you know, we're not as, you know, nice as you think. So oh, what you are you going to do? It's a Dune spinoff. Oh, a Dune spinoff. No way. Hmm. That sounds cool. Yeah. Oh, the Bene Gen the Bene Bezzy Generet? Je Bezzy Je Jesuit? <laughs> Bezzy Jesuit. Bezzy Jesuit. <laughs> is that what it is? No, literally. Uh, who is Werner von Braun et al. Laugh Aloud? Oh, the phony LRH squad is something else. Aren't they Laugh Aloud? Yes. They are <clears throat> really funny. Um, the chat, okay, so, the chat seems like it's got its own show going on, Becca. They do, <laughs> they do. They're a fun chat. Okay, let's go to the next one. I think I got my last one there. No. Yes. You know what I think happened? I'm realizing now. I think uh, I have Streamyard, but I used to have the pro version, and I think I'm allowed to have like a lot, like unlimited amount of pictures. But maybe oh. with this lower level, I I raised it to a lower. So I suspect what's going on here is that it just was like, no, you can't have that many. So here, did I, oh, actually, did I put got, that one on there? Oh wait, no, I've got this one, Gladiator Two. I thought I put another one in there. Hold on a second, let me check. Gladiator 2. I do remember writing that. Oh, you know what? There's one on there that... Uh, there's or, one on there that... Uh, or Captain that America? No, I, I didn't even put it on my list. And why did I... That's like probably my number one most anticipated movie of, uh, of the season here. And it's uh, Gareth Edwards called... The creator. Oh, the creator. Yes. Yes. Why did okay. I not put that in there? I think you, okay. You know what? I think I had it. And, uh, okay. We were, we were talking about that. Let me just get a picture of it right now. Yeah, for sure. But the creator uh, from the, from the, the director of rogue one, my oh, number yeah. two star Wars favorite movie. Oh yeah. That was okay. So remember I was saying earlier, Oh, I'm like, Oh, I just saw a review of this movie yeah. today. So it must have just come out. Well, I think it was uh, an early screening. Early I think it screening. comes out. It comes out the 29th. Okay, here let me. I just uh, here it is. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna show it. There it is. Yeah, I had it on the. I even had it on the uh, on the thumbnail. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. So do you want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah. So from the director of Rogue One, mm -hmm. Gareth Gareth Edwards. One of the best um, Star Wars movies. One of the best Star Wars movies. And uh, this looks phenomenal. Again, brand new science fiction, great uh, director, new stories. I'm all in. Um, the trailer looks pretty exciting. Um, and uh, this actor was in Tenant. Oh, yes. Amazing movie. Yeah. You yeah. know what? Actually, bro, I saw that movie. 
uh, during the pandemic mm -hmm. at a theater. We were like, let's, we got to see this at a theater. So we went to the Cine, there's like a Cinesphere uh, near me. And uh, I think it was on, on IMAX. Mm. Great. Great. So are you going to so, see this on IMAX? I definitely IMAX? will. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So do you want to talk a little bit about it? Um, I mean, I'm super excited um, about it. And <laughs> now that one, like, you know, we were baby. talking about uh, apocalypse. Is, is there, is, this one's like an, a bit of this, an alien. Yeah, this one is robot. a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence going awry. Yeah. And I think that is obviously one of the things that we are kind of facing now in the real world. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, science fiction is great when it, uh, when you can hold the lens over our own society and tell a story in a intriguing and thoughtful way. So I think this, uh, this will be part of it. This kind of reminds me of, uh, the Terminators and, uh, Cy the Cyberdyne Institute. Um, but, um, I, I was yeah. going to say, actually, um, Kat says it reminded me of the AI movie with Haley Joel Osment, and which right. was also with Hugh, who, who was, um, what was that called? That was a, a beautiful movie. Steven Spielberg. AI. It was just called AI? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminded me of that because it's with, a child. Uh, Jude, Jude Law. Jude Law. It's yeah. a child. Well, it's an AI that's in a child form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That he's sort of tasked to sort of protect. Right. So, um, yeah, we're going to get some more AI and some more children. There was um, there was a football game, I think, just recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they had some, uh, some very interesting um, marketing um, things that were going on in this. They had hired all the actors to, to wear these jumpsuits, and mm -hmm. the heads – with uh, the like the robot uh, brains that they had, and then they just had the actors sitting in the stands randomly, just watching the game. They had you know overalls that had create the, the name creator on them, um, but that's that's kind of that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Now I have to say, actually, uh, what's the actor's name? I I think okay, sure, he's Denzel Washington's son, but I think he's done a he's proved himself as a, an amazing actor. Yeah, I, I didn't know that actually. Yeah, and he's in uh, uh, the was it the Klansman? I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. Mm -hmm. He was in that as well. I anyway, yeah, what's his name? It's like, guys, do you know what his name is? Oh, the the actor. Yeah, John David Washington. John, yeah, I think okay, sure, he is Denzel Washington's son, but I think in his own right, you know, like Maya Hawk or you know any of mm -hmm. these young actors, they you know, they're sure they might have had a helping hand from their parents. Bryce Dallas Howard. Bryce Dallas Howard. <laughs> She's actually leaning in more to the directing, like her yeah. dad, mm -hmm. which is really interesting, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not I'm not afraid. I'm not hating on AI. Uh, do you guys in the chat, are you guys into AI? I use it a lot, actually. I use it for my work all the time. <clears throat> yeah. I, start, I recently started using it in Photoshop. Oh, okay, cool. Just, just to play around. It's kind of yeah. scary. It is. I like, for instance, chat GPT, I use it quite a bit. And like, even like, for instance, this sounds like it's just something really, really simple. Sometimes I'll write a sentence like for work and I'll be like, I don't know if I like the tone of that. Like, I don't, it doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it into chat GPT and I'll ask it to rewrite it or rework it. And until I get it to what I want. So, you know, it's, and because I know there's been this whole people are complaining, of, not, I don't want to say complaining, people are concerned about it stealing from artists and things like that. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's just like, I just need it to uh, help me uh, write an email. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not creating like a work of art or anything. I'm just yeah. composing an email and I'll be like, hey, AI. But one thing I've noticed is that uh it's the responses aren't always the same so i feel like i'm dealing with different ai sometimes like yeah interesting so for instance 
if you let when I'm doing a video, sometimes I need a, a transcript from an interview, let's say. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a costume designer who will have done an interview on Golden Derby and I can like YouTube creates a transcript. So I'll take the transcript and I'll put it into <laughs> chat GPT and chat GPT will sometimes just add its own little flourish to it. Nice. <laughs> and I'll be like, Chat GPT, please don't add that flourish. Just keep, you know, just remove the time codes and put it into paragraphs or something. And then I'll be like, oh, so sorry. So sorry about that. <laughs> so it's really, really funny. It's like dealing with a child sometimes. <laughs> it's got an attitude. It, yeah. And no, it's always very nice. <laughs> I've oh. never had I've never had an attitude from Chat GPT. Mm, that's funny. Uh if you it says if your art can be beaten by AI, you're probably making sure sh shitty art. Well, <laughs> this is the thing. Like there's you, there's been a lot. Like I tried another thing called I think um, Ro, you've tried it. Uh, it's a a, a a generated art. Oh know. yeah, 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 yeah. The um, I tr I was trying one and it was really fun. I was just having a lot of fun playing around, mm -hmm. but like people get really <laughs> angry about it. Yeah. So yeah. How dare you? Yeah. Exactly. I'm like I don't I don't sell my stuff to begin with. I just 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 for no. fun. <laughs> no, and apparently, legally speaking, you can't own anything that you generate through mm -hmm. uh, or uh, through AI. So, yeah. okay, so that's the big one. And now, so once I'm done this video, I'm probably gonna go watch the review that I saw oh, that yeah. came up with Jeremy Johns had a review on the creator. I I'm gonna go see. Uh, I'm gonna go see this on Friday. Oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you're definitely going to see it in the theaters. That'll be awesome. Oh, yeah. Not on my iPhone. Now, is this the first movie that the director of Rogue One has done since Rogue yes. One? Or have they done a... Really? This is the I first think one? So. Yeah. <gasps> wow. So this is sort of their, you know, magnum opus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that should be uh, that should be kind of cool. I think it's going to be really amazing. Do you know music, how long music. it is? Is it a long um, movie? Let's see. Don't know. It doesn't say. It's so funny that George Lucas had a movie called AI, and I was like, oh, which seems very much ahead of its time. Steven Spielberg, you mean? Sorry, Steven Spielberg. What did yeah. I say? George Lucas. <laughs> George Lucas. Sorry, Steven Spielberg. Now, I think you had. So did you want to talk about Captain America? Brave um, New World? Just to say, uh, you know, I, I I do enjoy the Marvel movies and uh, mm -hmm. when something. But you new were saying Marvel also it, it might be a toss up between this and uh, what's the other one? Um, Gladiator 2. With Gladiator Deadpool 2 Washington. or no, the other superhero movie you gave me oh, was uh, Deadpool 3. Deadpool 3. Yeah. And I think I'm, I'm more curious about Deadpool 3 because it'll be the first Deadpool um that's coming out of the disney studio and obviously deadpool has a potty mouth mm -hmm. um so and, and, hugh, and hugh grant or hugh laurie hugh jackman's gonna be in it i think yes yeah, but what so. i what i did notice though when i just was looking through some pictures of captain america is harrison ford's gonna be in it mm -hmm. he plays thunderbolt mm -hmm. ross i think and again another actor who's well into their 80s and mm -hmm. still killing it yeah and being super busy because he's got that really great TV show where he's a therapist on. Um, yeah, that's a great show. The comedy. Apple. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That, his role in that uh, really surprised me because I, you know, mm -hmm. obviously I, I don't think of him as a comedic actor, but his timing is is great. It, he's amazing. Yeah. It's funny when I go back and look at old interviews with him where he, mm -hmm. he's very super dry. Right. Yeah. So like where he's on Letterman or have you. And I, I saw someone and I think he would have been in his 30s at the time, like when he did Star Wars and, and that and Indiana Jones. So he is so dry. Yeah. And it, sometimes I think it just goes over people's heads. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah. But, but his, yeah, you know, it's a perfect uh, he was perfectly cast for that role. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, for sure. So, yeah. And then there's Gladiator. I didn't, okay. I didn't even know there was a Gladiator. Uh, again, it was funny because we were just talking about Denzel Washington. So it appears that Denzel Washington is going to be in this. I think this is just, I don't know what this picture is. It's probably just a yeah, that composite. Like, yeah. But, um, yeah. It sounds like it's a sequel. It sounds like it's a sequel, though. Yeah, and I don't know if it's directly related to the characters in the first film. I know there were, 
I don't know. They were they were toying with the idea of continuing that story. Uh, I think all studios know mm-hmm. this. This is uh, yeah. Tape, it was really thought connected to it. <clears throat> uh, yes. I think so. And really yeah. speaking, yeah, really Scott, like you were some saying, oh, they might be doing another Blade Runner. And he had, uh, you know, um, he has been, it's like these people are like Martin Scorsese, uh, Steven Spielberg, like these, these aging directors are mm. still like coming yeah. up with amazing. Like Martin Scorsese has a new movie coming out that looks so good. Yeah. So I could he's, he's also complaining about Marvel comic movies ruining cinema. So there's that too. Oh, but I don't agree with him on that. Neither do I. I think it's just, I think it's sort of a ridiculous thing. I had the same issue with Spielberg though, was complaining that a movie on streaming shouldn't be able to be nominated for an Oscar. It has. Yeah. It should have to be in the theater. So the workaround now, like for instance, I just went to TIFF. I went to. I think I saw like six movies. The workaround now is that you just get your sh- you just get your movie showed it, uh, at a festival, a right? Or for like a month, Lim- limited, limited, run. really limited run. That's right. what they're doing now. But I I still think that's ridiculous because Martin Scorsese had a really great movie. That was, I think, on HBO or, you know, and I don't think it. And then this new one, which it sounds like it's going to be going to streaming as well. Maybe it was in the theater, but I I don't know. I just think I, I just think that that's just a bit of a ridiculous argument to yeah, say. I that. mean, you know, during the 70s and 80s, I mean, he had no problem with uh, some of his friends doing some great popcorn films, George Lucas and Steven yeah. Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Um, but then all of a sudden now he has a problem with popcorn films. I don't know. Seems a little disingenuous. Did I say who? <laughs> yeah, you did. You guys know I'm terrible with names. <laughs> <laughs> but that would, that would be pretty funny. That would be really, really funny. Uh, yeah, Gollum that wants to be a real boy. <laughs> You guys are hilarious. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm always like, y- you know, in terms of of movies, why can't you just let people enjoy the movies that they enjoy? <laughs> and obviously, the studios are making them because they're making money. Sure. People are going to see them, so there obviously is a is a you know a desire for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and like some of these shows, like sometimes I'll be like, I'm just going to kick back and watch. Uh, you know, one of these Marvel shows, it, it's a half an hour, you know, I can get through it quite easily. Sometimes I think they're like 22 minutes. I don't even think they're that long. By the time mm-hmm. the credits are playing and everything, I'm like, I can easily consume one of those shows before I go to bed. I'll watch an episode of The Mandalorian or something. Yeah. So, or WandaVision or what have you. And I can, you know, you can binge them very, very easily because they sure. just, they upload. Oh, some of them are, do, they do them weekly, but. Yeah. Absolutely. You'd rather see movies, yeah. You'd rather see movies in theaters. I totally get that. Yeah, Carl says uh, the film should be seen in cinema, in a cinema nowhere else. Um, <laughs> elitism one hundred and one. It's so true. It's so cinematic. Yeah, there's definitely some movies. Like for instance, if it's a quiet drama, I have no problem watching that on at home. Yeah. But if it's a cinematic style movie, I really like. For instance, I went to see. Uh, everywhere all at once is that what's called in the theater. My husband and I are like, we got to see this in the theater. And I'm so glad we did. Cause it was, mm-hmm. it, uh, it was during, again, kind of during the pandemic and everything, but we were like, we, sh- we really need to see this. And I have to say when I went to TIFF and I saw six films in like one week, it was so much fun. Like it really was. And I was at several different theaters and I ended actually getting to go to see, um, uh, like take a Watiti's new movie, and that was really fun. And then uh, I got to see uh, one movie at the TIFF Lightbox, which is in downtown Toronto. Mm-hmm. And I said to my husband, "Oh my god, this is the most amazing theater I've ever been in before in my life." They basically took a cement box and put it inside of a box. So you're in the middle of downtown, but you cannot hear anything. It's super quiet. Mm. And the seats are amazing. They're really big. It's designed to watch cinema. So it's one of like a lot of the older cinemas, like they're kind of falling apart. And and then they forced us to go to some of the theaters to watch some of the movies, which was just an awful experience. But this was the most 
amazing experience I've had watching a movie in years. Mm. And for that one, we watched uh, the um, the Holdovers, which is the new Paul Giamatti movie, which is so good, by the way. Um, nice. That is the kind of movie you could see at home, but it was just kind of fun still to be at the theater sure. to watch it. So just to be there with like 500 other people, it's so cool, right? Yeah. It's it's interesting, Carl, because years ago when I was younger and we started, they started coming out with like <laughs> video discs and cassette discs, like cassette tape. And then they're like, that's going to be the death of cinema. Right. You know, we've got these video. Do you remember those? They were like these video discs. Ro, I'm a little bit older than you, but they had these video discs. They Later were discs. a record player. Right. Laser disc, sorry, mm-hmm. and then they had the you know, then they had the de- the cassette before they went to, then they went to DVD and and then Blu-ray and so on. But um, you know, and I remember them saying, "Okay, that's it. No one's going to go to the right. cinema anymore." Yeah. And you know, because you were asking me recently, like, "Oh, are you worried that they're going to start using AI for costumes and everything?" And I told you, I don't think I'm really worried because they're always like, "Oh, you know, audiobooks are going or." Uh, digital books are going to replace paperback books or um, people aren't going to go to the cinema anymore. Or people aren't going to, you know, buy music anymore. They're just yeah. going to, you know, take it off, seal it off the internet or something. Right. So, Although, you know, streaming services mm-hmm. really have, um, you know, given, <laughs> given a run for the cinema, for the cinema. Um, I think a lot of movie theaters have kind of closed and I think COVID had a lot to do with it as well. Yes. But, you know, I don't I don't care how good your home theater is at home. I'd rather still go to the movie theater. Yeah, it's it's a really fun experience. And yeah. I've been we you know, I have two boys, like two teenage boys, and we do my movie night every Friday at home. But we we do oftentimes like if it's a big blockbuster, we'll say mm-hmm. we got to see this at the theater. And, I, and I'm really mm-hmm. glad to see that post pandemic that people are starting to return to it. So it is really fun. The one thing I that I did get to do, which was really fun at TIFF, is I got to see a TV show at TIFF. This is a new thing they're doing. So they'll take like they'll sh- they'll screen like a couple of episodes of a show. So the the episodes were. Um, it's from a it's a paramount plus show that's coming out it's actually a korean horror series limited series i think so that was very cool like to see Mm, a television show aired in a theater and i know they've done that like um robert who i follow on twitter he got to see wheel of time in a theater like so they sometimes do that like as a big sort of um uh, like launch type thing. Sure. So that was kind of really neat to be able to do that. And I'm trying to think what the name of the show was, or the name of the movie was, but it was basically the premise is that this guy goes to, he's a, a cop and he goes to a hotel room to, to see this young woman. And she thinks that he's there for like, he thinks she, you know, that she's nefarious there. purposes, nefarious purposes, but really she's, they're running a, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, organ. They're stealing organs from people and selling them on the black market. And so, but you know, when you see these movies, normally what, how it works is they sort of just, you know, you go there and then, you know, they, they drug you or something and then they take your liver or they take your kidney or something. But in this case, they sell, they auction off the whole thing. Like basically they take you and they, and they, they have your whole body there. They mark you up like, okay, here's where the liver is. Here's where the kidneys is. And then they have a, a live auction in the hotel room. <laughs> so it was just like, but, wow. but being Korean, it was sort of campy and really funny at the same time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that was, I got to see the first two episodes of that. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah so they, it, they did. Uh, they, they released uh, episode five of Ahsoka in, in the theaters, uh, oh. very, very limited run. Um, and, or they did that. The, um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's kind of a really fun thing and it's a really nice thing to do for the fans. Yeah, absolutely. You I know, agree. I, I think it's, it's such a fun idea. And my son, like he's now sort of getting, I took him to Comic-Con like, uh, Ro, I know you go to a lot of the, you know, Chicago Comic-Con, you go to a lot of those, right? So I took my son to his first one, like this summer, we have a big one in Toronto and, 
And I just think it's sort of like, it's just such a, a, a really cool thing to be able to experience the fandom in, in that way, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. so, you know, so being able to go like, so for instance, when we went to see one of the movies, this was incredible because I put this on Twitter actually. So I went to see one of the movies at TIFF and because of the writer strike and the, and the actor strike, none of the actors were coming to the shows, right? right it's just yeah. really, they couldn't because they're not allowed to part of the strike. But Viggo Mortensen, I don't know how he worked it out, maybe because he's European. He came. Mm. So I go to the showing, like normally they go to the galas, right? They don't do the smaller viewings. But mm -hmm. so I went to see Viggo's movie and he he shows up like I couldn't believe it. So they introduced the movie and then the, they introduced him because he was the director and starred in the movie. And I'm like, oh, my God, Viggo Mortensen's here. <laughs> and then he says, hey, guys, like I really, you know, if you enjoy my movie, I hope you enjoy it. Oh, I'm going to stay around at the end and do a Q&A. Cool. And so he stayed around for the Q&A, which was amazing. And in very typical Canadian fashion, at the end, everyone was like, you know, he, he finished and everyone's like, okay. And they just kind of get up and leave. <laughs> like you would think people would be swarming him right? You know, yeah. because he's Aragorn and, and all this mm -hmm. type of thing. No Canadians like, okay. Oh, I guess we have to all go. Right. Bye. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so it was really, really cool. And then when we went to see another screening, he was at that another screening as well. He showed up at the one at the bill light box. So that was really, really amazing. Um, but anyway, it just seemed like the nicest person ever, by the way, you know, it just seemed like yeah, a very I've heard sweet stories person. that he's, yeah, really, really nice and easygoing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so we've come across, we've come, um, out of this with a couple of things. One is that we feel that people should see movies in cinemas. Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, especially when it's appropriate and, um, uh, and that, but yet, and, uh, uh, but we still think that comic book movies dc and marvel movies still have a, a lot of value so is, is that what our takeaway is today <laughs> and uh nazis invented nasa or started nasa <laughs> a lot of good yes. stuff there a lot of good stuff there yeah we got we covered most of the basics i think yeah absolutely uh, would you watch a tv show at a theater yes well that's what i was just saying i think that would be so fun like i've heard this before like say for instance house of the dragon i think they did that they, you know yeah. in a local you know the other thing is do you know that you can rent a theater and do a, a yeah. viewing like a showing yeah. if, mm -hmm. if you have enough people yeah uh the other thing that's really fun is some of the rep cinemas will sometimes show older movies so i mm. saw soylent green <laughs> Oh, wow. Charlton Heston. I got to see that at a rep cinema at one point it was so fun. Yeah. To see some of these older movies. Yeah. They're um, yeah. Chicago has uh, a lot of uh, we've got a theater called the music box that shows a lot of really like older artsy fartsy movies, but some of some old, uh, you know, MGM movies, which are a lot of fun. Like the, like the old musicals or, mm -hmm. or just, yeah, yeah that, that would be very cool. Yeah, it's just nice because, well, first of all, you get popcorn and, you know, snacks and then just to be able to see it on the big screen. The funny thing was when we went to the TIFF movie or sorry, when we went to the TIFF Bell Lightbox, my husband, I, I've told you this road works. He's a video guy. So he mm -hmm. works at TIFF every year. And the one thing he said I thought was really weird because I, I thought it looked fine is that he thought the screen looked too small at the mm. theater. Yeah. So I thought that was really, really interesting. And I said, oh, I don't know. It looks pretty good to me. The sight lines were amazing. Whereas when we went to the th some of the theaters, so they take a traditional theater where you would see a musical or something, and they just drop in a screen. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. But the sight lines and everything are terrible. And the right. chairs are really uncomfortable. They're not like cinema chairs, right? Where you sure. can lean back and you got, yeah. you got your, your drink holder. You're kind of like rigid. You're kind of sort of sitting up, right? So, um, yeah, so, uh, just really totally agree with, uh, going to the theater guys. Absolutely. Anyway, so is there anything else we want to talk about before we, uh, I, I just wanted to say, I always love having you on here and I really, we were saying that maybe this could be something that we could do regularly. Maybe we'll have to come up with a name for our show. Absolutely. I would love that. <laughs> Always a pleasure to be here. Yeah. And we can even bring in some other guests or something if you want. Sure. For I know sure. some, I know some, uh, some people who probably would love to come on. 
Some people in the, the chat. chat. Some people in chat. Carl. <laughs> Carl might want to come on. Yeah. <clears throat> Carl's an you. interesting guy. Like I got to know him through Carl. How did I get to know you through Robert? But Carl's a really fascinating person. He knows a lot of stuff. Uh, is that, oh, you know, I was going to say, actually, it's really funny, natural that, um, you should say that there was this one point at Vigo's movie where this woman asked a question. There's like two, there was like two timelines happening. So there was like the present timeline and then there was a flashback timeline that were happening. And I think this is really confusing for a lot of people. Like anyone watch Westworld, I think they had multiple timelines and it's sort of a creative device that a lot of design directors use. So this girl asked a question of Viggo Mortensen, and she didn't understand that there were two timelines going on. And you know what he said? He said, well, obviously, I haven't done my job as a director mm. that you can understand. Yeah. Isn't that, wow. isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I had no problem with it. And years ago, I went to see... Um, it was a Quentin Tarantino movie uh, with Uma Thurman and John Travolta. Oh, the uh, Pulp Fiction? Pulp Fiction. Yeah. So I went to see this movie years ago at the theater and I was, uh, I was in college and I had a boy, my boyfriend and I at the time went to see the movie and we came out and we're like, oh my God, that was amazing. And there were these people and they were talking to the staff and they said, excuse me, we, we need our money back. They said that they thought that the reels were out of order at the God, movie. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I said to my boyfriend at the time, I'm like, oh, my God, they didn't understand yeah. how he was telling the story that he was kind of doing this back and forth. Yeah. So isn't that funny, though? So they, they probably didn't go see Memento. <laughs> 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 oh question for the chat are you guys now that you, uh, do you guys watch when you watch a show on tv now like on streaming do you put the subtitles on uh bro do you do that i do that upon second viewing because sometimes you miss stuff so yeah i'll watch it first to kind of absorb the entire experience and then i'll go back watch it again with subtitles on just in case i miss anything yeah, uh, it was funny because we were watching We All the Time the other night, and it, it, you know sometimes it's like the uh, there's accents too, like the you know British accent right. yeah, and yeah, they yeah. glaze over certain things. So I'll be like, and I find when I was younger I was better at it, I could figure it out. But now that I'm older, I'm like, why did they? What did they just say? So there is this moment where one of the main characters like delivered this like you know heavy gravitas line and then i just i was like what did he say so i made my husband put the subtitles on so i could go back and re-watch it but sometimes i find myself just watching it with subtitles yeah that's fine absolutely <laughs> i'm not old no carl you're old <laughs> yeah and it's funny i'm like wait a minute yeah heidi says she went to go see this movie a few years ago i'm like that's quite a few years ago yeah <laughs> i'm thinking of like newer I'm thinking of newer like, Tarantino like, movies. When I was asking you, you know, John Travolta, you're like, John I'm Travolta? Like, what? Yeah. what movie is that? <laughs> yeah, it's like my brother. My brother's 10 years older than me, and I was talking to him about Nick Cage, and I was trying to explain to him about Renfro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Renfro, I should say, uh, with Nick Cage where he plays Dracula. So my brother's like, it's so funny talking to my brother because he's like 10 years older than me. And, uh, but my, it's funny, you know, it, we talk about, um, split, uh, what do you call it? Uh, mixed marriages or mixed relationships. So I am like, I am a PC and then my husband's, uh, a, a Mac. Mac. <laughs> my brother is a Trekkie and I'm a Star Wars. Oh, nice. <laughs> so we're a little bit, you know, I can't imagine what Thanksgiving <clears throat> dinners are like. Oh, we get along splendidly. No, we get along really, really well. Yeah. No, it's just because he grew up, he grew, he grew up uh, in, because he's, he's so much older than me. He grew up during that time sure. before, long before Star Wars had come out. And, but you know what, to be honest with you, he built my, when I, I went out for Halloween when I was 10 as Princess Leia and he built my blaster for me. So I have a huge love for my brother. Because nice. of my my blaster that he made me. <laughs> you have to show it show it to us one day. I do. I have a picture of it. I'm going to show it to you. 
Uh, okay. So anyway, uh, I guess we could probably wrap things up. What do you think? Ro, yeah, how are you doing? Absolutely. And then we're going to do this again really soon. Call me up. Okay, I will. So do you want to just tell everyone where they can find you? By the way, uh, Ro has the funniest posts on Twitter. Like, you're so hilarious. I always just, like, crack up at <laughs> all your posts. I try, I try to have fun, man. Come on. <laughs> Life is too yeah. serious with all so the you, bullshit going. Exactly. So you have yeah. to go over to Twitter and follow uh, Ro over there. because he's just, And I put your link in the description. So Absolutely. please go check him out. Absolutely. Yeah, so just, just tell your tell your smart speaker to play the latest Scare of Scuttlebutt podcast, and you'll find us. We are part of a collective of content creators, both YouTube and audio, uh, the Red 5 Network. You can find the rest of our team at bio.link slash red5. Like it says right there. Yeah, very cool. What, so is that a Star Wars reference? I don't even know. <laughs> Where's your geek card? Can you send <laughs> you it, back it back to me? Take it back. No, seriously, what does it mean? Red five is the call sign for Luke Skywalker in the original movie. Oh, red five standing by. Okay. So that's terrible. I don't know that I should know that. <laughs> One of the things I was going to tell you is years ago, like speaking of my brother, I was chatting about him. So when I was little, I, oh, I wouldn't have been that little. I would have been a 10 or 11 after Star Wars came out. And my brother said to me, do you, oh, do you want to know something? And I said, sure. He says, do you know why, why Darth Vader is like that? Why he's in like a, an aqua lung, like in a in lung suit or whatever. And I'm like, no, why? He said he got pushed into a volcano. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And then so for years, I was going around thinking like Darth Vader had been pushed into a volcano. <laughs> and then when they did the Star Wars movies, the prequel, I'm like, that's pretty close. Yeah. yeah that's I, pretty close. He I told remember me that Obi-Wan yeah. had to push him into a volcano. Right. I remember reading that years ago. At yeah, time, so I got yeah. that from my brother. Mm -hmm. So and then uh, and we were uh, chomping at the bit, waiting for that story to come out, right? <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, oh, by the way, how is um? I heard that Anakin is back in uh, a, 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 a <laughs> Ahsoka. Okay, Ahsoka. <laughs> He is, and it's glorious. Hayden, Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Who is, is another uh, Canadian? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's it's been fantastic to see him, to uh to get the fans to kind of uh back in that. Uh, yes, that Carl, I'm embarrassed. But Carl didn't know either. He didn't. No, as you can see there, back there. Oh, a, I, oh, I he said he didn't know either. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and you know what? I can't row. I can't get my kids into Star Wars. It's really awful. I'm like, how are you, my children? <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. That's They're into funny. Monty Python, though. I got them into Monty Python. Oh, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. The so classic. that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> we watched The Life of Brian on Friday. It was so fun. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. Carl, a Sith never. A Sith is the one that deals in absolutes. In You are it, with oh, me yeah. or against me, Anakin. <laughs> Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know it's like midweek. It's hump day. And I just wanted to, I had like, you know, I, I really took it easy over the summer. Um, I just, because my kids were going into high school and I just wanted to be able to spend some time with them because they grow so quick. They grow so quickly. Right, Ro? Absolutely. So, my, mine is uh, going to be 19 in November. It's freaking crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. How is it that you have a 19 year old? <laughs> <laughs> like, how know. is that possible? Yeah. So I, yeah, anyway, so I just sort of took it easy, but uh, Ro and I have been talking about, you know, trying to do something regular. And also I've got some upcoming interviews. Hopefully I'm going to be doing, uh, I've got an, I am working on a video about foundation, which is so fun by the way, because it's got so many inspirations, like they're taking from, you know, mm -hmm. the Roman empire and all that type of thing, which is always really fun for me. Do you like doing that type of thing, Ro? Like, do you like digging in and Absolutely. looking at the lore and studying yeah. it and everything? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so fun, right. To do that, to geek out, mm -hmm. <laughs> I call it geeking out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so guys, so hopefully, uh, uh, like Carl, thanks so much as always. And, uh, I think I have you as a moderator, so I appreciate that. I like, we don't have that many people in the chat, but you know, you're keeping things, uh, under control. So I've <laughs> never really had too many problems in that area. <laughs> I have lovely, lovely people who watch us. Very so nice. yeah. Love so anyway, everyone, so have a lovely evening and enjoy your weekend. And I hope you're getting the beautiful weather we're getting up here in uh, Canada. We're getting some beautiful fall, beautiful summery, 
fall weather, like yeah. warm weather, I should say. It rained today a little bit, but uh, the last couple of days have, have been really, really beautiful. Yeah, it's been really yeah. nice and like not too, not too hot and just lots of sunshine because we mm -hmm. had kind of a damp summer. I don't know. I think you, I don't know if you guys were getting all that rain over the summer. Mm -hmm. We had We've some got flooding, a lot, of, a lot it. of flooding. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of flooding. So anyway, thanks everyone and have a lovely evening. Take care. Okay. Bye all. May the force be with you. <laughs> bye.